Midjourney just launched a new video update. We can now create looping videos. We can add both a starting frame and a final frame. And then there are like two small things they also added. Let me show you a looping video that worked so well. I honestly can't tell where it begins and ends. Can you see the loop? Like, can you tell where the video started? I don't know. I think that's so impressive. And I do think this whole looping feature works better with like these artistic pictures. When they're realistic, they can get kind of choppy near the end at least in my experience. I'll show you how to create this on your own. First, I wanted to show you where this picture came from. This is my new glow-in-the-dark mood board. Even my community hasn't had access to this yet. If you want to try this yourself, use this code right here. XI8U7L3. That's my gift for me to you if you want pictures that look like this. Now, if you've clicked on one of your pictures to expand it in this way, you can now find the looping feature in the bottom right. We have our normal options of auto low motion and high motion, and underneath those are the looping buttons. Now, I just have to point out that if you want to edit your prompt, you actually have to click on this button right here, animate manually. It doesn't necessarily look like a button at first glance, but this will load it into the prompt box as normal. But let's go back to the grid where that came from and I'll show you how to do it here. So we have our pictures. We can still hover over and animate, but to get to looping, we actually have to click on the picture and drag it into the prompt box. On the left, we have the starting frame. That's how it's worked for the last couple of weeks, but now you will see this loop button right here. We need to click on that. This little icon will update and now we're creating a looping video. We can choose between low and high motion. We'll hit submit. I'm gonna hit up on my keyboard to load the last prompt. That's another pro tip. I'm gonna click on high and then we'll see how that's different. This is what happens when we use the low motion loop. And maybe you can tell where the looping starts, but maybe you can only tell because you already saw where the starting frame came from. Either way, I think it did a pretty good job. And if we happen to like one of these videos, we can right click on it, click like, and then now we will see this heart icon appear in the top right. It will just stay there permanently. And I guess this is helpful for videos in general, because when videos aren't playing, they're all on the same starting frame, and there's no way to tell which of those videos were actually successful. So that little icon now can help you backtrack pretty easily. Here's the high motion looping video. And yeah, that's what you can expect. You'll take your starting frame, it's gonna do some motion, and it's gonna end up back where it started. But let me show you what that looks like with a more realistic picture. Maybe you like those results, but I think you can see a little hitch right near the end. She kind of goes back into place and then for just a split second, she freezes and then continues the motion again. In my experience so far, I've noticed that less when the starting images are more stylistic. Maybe this could improve in the future. But then the other great feature that came with this update is the ability to add a starting frame and a different ending frame. And like, look how funny this video is. It's kind of hard to tell. I'll show you the two pictures I used in a second, but look how the video evolves when you use them together. I took this picture of a cat. You can click on it and drag it into the starting frame. Make sure loop is not selected. And now we have the chance to add an ending frame. I then took this picture of a dog in that same style. And that's kind of important. When you're using this feature, you're going to want the style to be consistent because the bot only has five seconds to blend between them. I'll show you what it looks like when you don't use the same style in a second. So then we're going to click on this picture and we're going to bring it up into the ending frame. Again, we can choose low or high motion and hit submit. You could also add a prompt here, but when you're using a similar style, I found that that's not always necessary. Although you can guide the direction a little bit, so play around with that if you want. Nonetheless, we'll get results like these. And as you can see, three out of the four didn't work that well. Well, maybe half of them didn't work. Number one on the left, not that great. Number two from the left actually wasn't bad at all. Then number three also kind of failed, and in number four, I think it's so cute. Look how much personality there is. The cat falls backwards and takes its stuff with it like that. <laughs> that is so funny. Let me zoom in so you can see this again. The cat sees the dog, falls back. <laughs> like... <laughs> That is so awesome how Midjourney was able to blend between the two frames with no guidance for me. I did not add to the prompt. That's how powerful this technology can be, even if it is a little frustrating to use. I tried to take this dog here and blend it into this pig here. A fluffy dog, a fluffy pig. And, <laughs> you know, it didn't work out that well, but I got one result I wanted to show you. Okay, first I'll show you the ones that didn't work. This was with no prompting. The dog kind of just moves a little and then, like, 
poofs into a pig. And that might work for you, for sure. I'm not going to knock it. It's interesting in its own way. But when I did add a prompt, the dog transforms into a pig, I got some results I really liked. Namely, this one over here on the right side, number four. I'll zoom in for you right now so you can see. We start with our dog, and then it kind of turns into a pig <laughs> without the nose being changed, and then the pig nose pops in at the end. That is so funny, especially because there's some physics to the nose after it pops in. Now, let me show you what it looks like when your starting frame and ending frame don't have anything to do with each other. We have this woman as the starting frame and then a picture of me as the final. And like Mid Journey does not know what to do. I kind of just pop in there at the very last second with my face sort of looking the same way that she's looking. But <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not good. It's basically a waste of your credits. Try to avoid a big difference between your starting and ending frame. The closer they are together, the more Mid Journey has to work with. That might seem obvious, but at least I can prove it to you. It's really not worth experimenting, in my opinion. You know, it's not going to do some sort of cool transformation between them. Like, it really is the path of least resistance. There's not much artistic presence in those results. But I do have one cool trick you should try, and that involves strong variation. I suppose you could use subtle as well. We want to take a picture and then we want to create variations of it and use those as the starting and ending frame. So instead of a looping video that closes on a replica of itself, we have a video that closes on something pretty close to itself and it makes the results a little more dynamic. So we have this image, a woman in a sleek, chic, marigold colored dress using my Cine Havana mood board. It's this code right here, X49JCLS. I gave this away to my community the other day and the results were a lot of fun. We're going to hit very subtle or very strong, I recommend strong, to dive a little deeper into this exact picture. And we'll end up with a grid like this, okay? From here, pick two of your favorites and use those as the starting and ending frame. I think I'll take number two here and we'll add this as the starting frame. And then you want to choose one that looks the most similar. Same, same, but different. And we'll add that as the ending frame. Here we have the regular loop and, you know, those are fine for sure. But if we use that as the starting frame and had a similar looking ending frame, we can get results like this instead. And like, you know, some of those are not going to be good. It obviously has to blend between two different pictures. But I used the word dynamic before because I think that's the best way of describing it. You see the color change, so maybe that's something you can address before you run the generation. But I think one of them looks pretty good. Number three there maybe, or number four. Again, it's just a little more visually interesting. I also want to point something out about extensions, okay? We have this video starting with the dog, ending with the cat. Okay, that's fine. Let's say we wanted to extend it and add a new ending frame. We can click on Extend Manual, and then that will give us an option to add a new ending frame. But you think that we want the cat to be the starting frame because that's how the original video ended. I know that might make sense, but that's not quite how Mid Journey works. You actually just want to leave this starting frame as it is. We'll take this one right here and we're going to add it as the ending frame. And this is an extension. If we made sure the cat was the starting frame and added a new final frame, it's actually just going to create a whole new video for you, a five second video. We want the extension. So we leave the dog as the starting frame and then we hit submit. Extensions are a little weird though. They don't work quite how you think they would. Unfortunately, there's no way to like specify a new starting frame and ending frame in an extended video. Maybe that doesn't make sense as I'm describing it, but once you try it yourself, I think you'll understand. Like here we have the results. We have the dog turns into the cat, but then the dog comes back into frame and then it quickly transforms into the newest one that we have as a final frame. Like, look, it's not very good. So maybe if you wanted to extend something, you could take the final frame, add that as the starting frame, create a new five second video, and then just stitch them together after something like that. I'm sorry, extensions don't work that well right now with this frame feature. But maybe I'm missing something, please let me know. The last thing I want to show you really quickly before we go, if you go to the personalized tab and go down to your mood boards, you can now sort your mood boards by newest, oldest, and alphabetical. I mean, if you've made a lot of mood boards, you know that's a big quality of life improvement. All right, there's your mid-journey video update. Let me know if I missed any good tips along the way. If you want to learn everything I know about mid-journey video, I have a great playlist you could check out right here. I hope you're doing well. Take care and I'll see you next time. Peace.